What's up YouTube, it's Kenny again. I'm on the Chickasaw Turnpike. I'm about two hours away from my delivery. And after that I'll be on home time for about a week this time, for about five days, all right? So there may not be a whole lot of content during that time. Just wanna make you aware of that. Stick with me, be patient. Let me take some downtime. I got a lot of stuff to do, so I'm gonna be really busy. But I wanted to make a little bit of a different kind of video today, all right? And I wanna talk about why I do all this investing and what my, what my goal is. You know, I've talked many times about how this is all building a retirement. But my idea of building a retirement may be a little bit different than what you imagine when people talk about a retirement. So I wanted to talk a little bit more specifically about what my goals are and what I'd like to accomplish with all of this. Apologize for the sign here. Uh, so, first of all, let's talk just a little bit about the Patreon, okay? Because that's really what, if you join the Patreon, you're really supporting my ability to fulfill my dreams of a retirement that will work for me and, and something that I can do uh, that I'll be able to enjoy my life in retirement, okay? So, a lot of these bigger YouTubers like Stockmo and Jeremy and me, Kevin, and these guys, they, they don't need your money, okay? They don't need you to join their Patreon and buy all their courses and, and all this stuff. For what one of those guys makes in one month off of their YouTube and Patreon and all that stuff, I could completely fulfill my dreams of building a retirement. And these guys make that much money every month. So, if you want to pay it forward to somebody who actually needs it and actually will use it for a goal to, you know, that means something, consider supporting me on Patreon, all right? I currently have about $35 worth of Patreon members, and I appreciate every single one of you guys who's joined the Patreon, all right? But I'd like to get that number higher because I really do have this goal that I'd like to reach. So let's talk about what my retirement looks like in my mind, okay? So as many of you know, I'm a musician. I've been writing and recording, or at least writing songs, literally since I was 10 years old. I play about 15 different, different instruments. I started playing in clubs young, like 15 years old. I was so young that my mom would have to sign release forms so that I could even play in these clubs. And I've been lucky enough over the years to play with some relatively bigger name acts, especially in, in the death metal scene back in the late 80s and early 90s. And also with some, you know, I played with some uh, people who've had hits like John Nitzinger and, you know, so, but I'm, I'm a, not a young man, okay? And I have no illusions that I'm gonna like somehow hit it big and make a bunch of money on playing music, okay? And over the last, say, 10 years or so, my focus has shifted toward recording and mixing and mastering, and I've gotten pretty damn good at it, if I do say so myself, okay? So initially, when I started this journey, I really wanted to open a recording studio, but you know, recording studios are not a very profitable business. And I have seen many recording studios come and go because you know the advent of digital recording makes it a lot easier for musicians to record stuff at home. And although they may not get the same quality they do at a nice studio, it's pretty damn close, okay? So and then there's also the fact that musicians just don't have a lot of money to throw around and studio time is expensive. So, I don't know how it is in other parts of the country, 
But in Texas, jam rooms are a big thing, okay? Now, if there's one thing that I've learned over the years of being a musician is that other than finding the right group of people to start a band with and having equipment and stuff, the biggest hurdle is having some place to rehearse. You always seem to have that shitty neighbor who complains no matter what you do, and it's just really hard to find some place to rehearse in a band, okay? Well, in Texas, we call them jam rooms. They're kind of like music complexes, and what they do is they rent rooms to bands to rehearse. And these bands will pay anywhere from, you know, it's around four hundred dollars, three fifty to five hundred, depending on the place and the quality and stuff like that. And generally, just as a rule of thumb, these places are dumps. Okay, they're in a bad part of town. Somebody got a warehouse, built a bunch of shitty rooms in there, and they rent them out. And the truth is that these places are always full. I mean, they're full. If you call a place trying to rent a jam room. There's going to be a waiting list. The place is full. And that's just the way it's been for years. So it seems as if however many rooms you can build, you can fill them up. Okay? So this is the business model that I'm, I'm wanting to pursue. I want to have a jam complex, which a large one with 40 jam rooms and a recording studio attached. And I want it to be nicer than these other places. And the way I view it is, it will allow me to have a recording studio that is supported by these jam rooms. So the jam rooms pay the rent, they feed me, house me, all that stuff. And then on site, there's a recording studio, so you've got 40 bands that are potential clients for the recording studio. A lot of other stuff also, you know, I mean, like, I'd like to have a nice area for people to hang out that has, like, a, sh a little shop so that, you know, if bands can't pay and they often will want to trade gear for rent, you could, you could do that, build up a stockpile of instruments, be able to sell them on site. You could have vending machines with... Uh, jacked up prices on strings and pigs and drumsticks and stuff like that and s sell them as like a, a oh my god the music stores are closed and we need this thing for this gig and you know they'd be able to get it right there on site there's a lot of, uh, of smaller little ways to make money within this uh, business model but the majority of it would be the bands and the recording studio. And by having this built-in clientele on site, you're able to do things like sell tickets for a lottery. And every three months, you give somebody a free recording session. Or uh, or they, buy, they can buy the tickets and you have a lottery and somebody wins a free recording session. There's lots of different strategies. But overall, the main strategy is to have this business of renting people jam rooms that at least based on everything that I've looked at I have no doubt in my mind that they would remain full and that I would, that I would have a waiting list of people to rent jam rooms and then using that as a way to have a recording studio and be able to not only record the people there but bring in outside bands to record and stuff like that and to me, that is like the perfect retirement. Not only do I get to play and record music, but I get to record other people, mix and master, be in the music scene, even though I'm an old man. It's just the perfect situation for me. Now, according to my math, and I'm pretty good at figuring stuff like this out, I could do this for somewhere between forty and $60,000, and that's renting a space, building all the rooms, which I'm not going to hire people to do it, maybe a few, but you know, a lot of it will be done by me and my friends building it out, 
make it nice, have a recording studio, get some of the equipment that I don't already have for that recording studio for somewhere around 50, 60 grand. And that's also having like five, six months worth of money while it gets rolling. It's not that much money. Like I say, for, for what one of these big YouTubers makes in a month, I could totally finance my retirement. Now, that's the goal. That's the goal with all of the money that I put into investing and the money that comes from the YouTube and the Patreon and all this stuff is to get to a point to where I can build up enough money to cash it out and start this business, okay? At that point, I'd be kind of starting over with investing. But that gets me to the place where I want to be, guys. And so I hope that after hearing all of this, you'll just at least consider joining the Patreon, all right? Just consider joining it for a small amount. I mean, obviously, if you can afford it, pay it forward with more. But if you can't, you know, the price of a cup of coffee a month helps me get to this goal. You know, and sure, it's not going to get me there, you know, five years, I mean, a, a year faster or something, but it definitely helps toward that goal. The goal is to get there within the next four years. Okay, I started investing about a year ago with a five year. I was hoping to, to meet these goals within five years. Okay, I'd like to be able to do it sooner. And this, if, if we could get this channel to grow some more. Get some more people in the Patreon. Get some more views on the videos. I could reach that goal a lot faster. And so anything that you guys can do to help out, even beyond putting money into my Patreon, you know, with maybe throwing me a super chat if I do a live stream or sharing the videos, maybe uh, telling some other people about the channel, anything you can do to help this grow and help me reach that goal faster, I really, truly appreciate it. So I hope this was interesting for you to just kind of hear what my thoughts and my plans are. And uh, yeah, I mean, consider supporting the channel and supporting somebody who actually will use it towards a real goal and not just further enrich these people that are already rich. I really, truly appreciate every single one of you guys who watches the videos and especially you guys who have already joined the Patreon. So keep watching thanks for your support and join the fucking patreon thanks for watching